Here's what we've got. You probably see my title there. There's a there's a House Bill 163. Uh, it was originally a medical bill. It was uh, that uh, one in which I voted for. However, now uh, it's been amended and it has a Senate amendment number two to it. I have some information here from the Illinois Sheriff's Association that I would like to share with you, friends. This is a uh, this is a uh, this is a constitutional altering bill that we're looking at. Here's a here's a kind of a brief statement from Illinois sheriffs. Late on January 5th, the Illinois General Assembly filed a 611-page bill that eliminates law enforcement as we know it from every community in the state. The Illinois General Assembly has until noon on January 13 to pass legislation before the next duly elected General Assembly takes office. Senate Amendment Number Two to House Bill 163 radically changes law enforcement victim services, criminal proceedings, and the protections of every law enforcement officer in the state regardless of employment as a peace officer, deputy, trooper, university police officer, corrections officer, court security officer, and other law enforcement. Through 611 pages, House Bill 163 eliminates all protection from law enforcement officers. It eliminates officers' ability to pursue their job without civil liability. It eliminates the ability to officers to pursue collective bargaining agreements. It invalidates the constitutionally protected due process of officers, and it substantially increases the cost of employers of law enforcement officers. I'm going to read to you. I have a pretty exhaustive list of what this bill uh, attempts to uh, create. But I'm just going to read a few of these off to you so you have an understanding of what uh, Governor Pritzker and Mike Madigan and how they hope to cripple law enforcement across the state of Illinois. This is, this is a sad day if this bill uh, sees the light of day, in fact. I'm just going to read about, uh, I'm going to read about a half of these off to you. It eliminates qualified immunity for police officers, making them civilly liable for everything, meaning that they can be sued anytime for anything that they do as a police officer. They're currently protected from that. It eliminates officers' rights to collectively bargain, creating a special class of public employee who does not have these rights in Illinois. It allows for unrestricted and ungoverned disciplinary policies of law enforcement officers. It prohibits departments from taking advantage of cost-saving federal surplus programs or allowing the purchase of certain militaristic equipment. You know, many times we see the uh, the, the, the big tank-like, you know, uh, intimidating-looking equipment that uh, police forces do have uh, uh, do have access to. What it doesn't show you is the millions of dollars of office equipment, equipment that they wear, uh, that the, is the bulk of all this that they receive from, uh, you know, essentially military surplus. It allows officers to be punished or fired based on anonymous and substantiated or unverifiable complaints with no sworn affidavits. Friend, that's, I can tell you something. If I get a letter in here, I learned this a long time ago on the school board. If you get a letter and you're not bold enough to sign your name to it, and I have no idea who it's coming from, that letter goes in the trash can. So uh, if you're going to send something, if you've got a complaint, if you've got a problem, uh, you send, you put your name, you put your address, you put your contact uh, information on that so we know that you know it's a real person or, or what the situation is. Uh, this allows for police officers to be fired or punished based on a uh, an anonymous complaint. Mandates that those unsubstantiated and unverified complaints be kept to be used against officers forever with no destruction and no limits as to how they can be utilized to inflict harm on officers. Substantially increases both initial and ongoing education requirements with no money to be paid for the increased cost and no assurances that the courses will ever be offered. So uh, all police facilities who have always had uh, state and federal funding uh, state of Illinois is desiring to take that away. So uh, property taxes, all of our tax uh, mechanisms that uh, fund the police uh, locally, uh, that's what they're doing. They're throwing this burden uh, on, the, on the local community. Mandates the use of body cameras by all departments for every officer, again, with no money for the cost of those cameras and 20 cut in LDG, LGDF funding. If you don't, you're going to be punished. If you uh, if you don't uh, um, 
where the, the body cams. Significantly increases the training requirements for those going through the academy and those that are already certified provides no money for this. Def defunds, listen to this one, defunds any department that does not comply 100% with the draconian requirements of the legislation. Eliminates funding for law enforcement agencies. No more, here's a good one, no more suspending driver's license for traffic violations. Complete ban on chokeholds and anything above the shoulders regardless of threat of serious bodily injury or death. Eliminates cash bail. Friends, for rural Illinois, this is a game changer. This is a destroyer to your local court system. Contact your, uh, uh, your local um, uh, clerk and have a discussion with them about this if you want to. This is, ba this is not good. Eliminates cash bail. Enacts multiple benefits for felons, including access to victims' compensation. We already know workers' compensation is terribly abused in Illinois. Now uh, we're, uh, we're going to have victims' compensation and, and open it wide open. Prohibits use of force in almost all situations and makes officers criminally liable for virtually any use of force. Removes prohibitions against obstructing police officers eliminates felony murder, institutes a three phone call bill, no custodial arrest for category B or C offenses, citation only, eliminates charges for habitual criminals, and then finally, uh, well, uh, yeah, charges officers with official misconduct, a class three felony, felony or banal and incident for banal and institute incidental issues. And then finally, uh, this goes into effect immediately if it is passed. Friends, this is where we're headed as in society. This is where we're headed as a nation. This is where we are headed as a state. You can get a whole, you can get on, you've heard me say this many, many times before. Go to ILGA.gov find out who your legislatures are, legislators are, your, your state rep and your uh, and your, uh, your Senate, I can tell you that I believe uh, the Republican uh, caucus will be against this. So please focus your attention uh, to the Democrat caucus. Call their office. Friends, if you go screaming and hollering, if you're rude, uh, you're not getting anywhere. You're going to get hung up on. Nobody's going to listen to you. But if you'll have a, 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 a conversation and just let these people know and especially if you're there if they are you know if you're a constituent of one of these elected officials let them know that call their office to have a discussion and tell them that uh, please uh, you know uh, do not consider this and like I said the bills that we're going to be looking at from tomorrow through next Wednesday require a simple majority and um, anyway stay engaged in the process uh, we've got some uh, we've got some valleys we're going to go through for a while, but the American people are smart. The American people know what to do. We've been warned about this. And we just simply need to get more engaged than we've ever been. So I'll keep you posted on this. I want to read from you today just a short out of Proverbs. And actually, I want to go back. Uh, this is yester This is out of my reading from yesterday. You know, many of you ordered the one-year Bible. And... Um, that's awesome. And many of you told me that the, the Bible was back ordered. So that tells me that many people across this land are getting engaged in God's Word and, and that they've had to uh, print and reorder. So uh, that's an amazing thing. But on yesterday, it's very fitting for the day that we had here in America. Proverbs 1 29 through 33. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the better, bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. Those are, uh, those are big words, friends. Those are words uh, from God to us. And if we fail to heed them, uh, then we will have uh, more troubles than we even think that we have right now as a nation. So 
Uh, let's go in prayer, if you would join me, please. Father God in heaven, I thank you so much for today. And Father, again, I lift up the, um, the wounds that were created in our country yesterday. I pray for healing. I pray that... Uh, and I pray that this division that seems wider and deeper than ever, Father God, I pray that uh, we can come together as Americans and as citizens of Illinois and we can seek and work for a better tomorrow. Father God, I pray that uh, for this complacency that you even speak of in your word, that uh, we get busy, we get to work, we get educated, we get informed. And, uh, Father God, we desire to do what is right and pleasing to you. Forgive us, Father God, for our sins. Open our eyes up. Open our hearts up. Open our minds up that we would know you and accept you and obey your ways. Father God, I just pray for uh, you know some of this troublesome legislation that I believe this is. And I just pray for your will be to be done. I pray for your people to stand up and speak up uh, against this, that, uh, that a certain bill like this would not pass. And... Father, I just I pray for the presidency of the United States of America. I pray for the governor of Illinois. And I pray, Father God, that they seek you out and know you as Lord and Savior and, uh, and are obedient to your ways. Father God, I pray for uh, uh, the elected officials all across this land. I pray, Father God, that they seek your ways and desire to do what is right. Help us. Guide us, guard us, and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's see what the day brings. You can make the difference. I've said it from day one. You are the difference. I can be the vessel and the mouthpiece when we're in Springfield for you. Uh, but you can make the difference. So God bless you. We'll see what the day brings. We'll tune in later. Thank you so much.